presiding officer, we all agree that there is an acute housing shortage in this country. Yet, Homes for Scotland, Cala Homes, Taylor Woodrow and Persimmon, all major house builders, have all warned, all warned repeatedly that the heat pump targets, especially for new builds, have had the effect of forcing up costs of house building so that fewer homes are being built in Scotland. So, if the First Minister wants to tackle the housing shortage, will he consign the Green Party half-baked pie-in-the-sky policy in the bin where it belongs, alongside deposit return and highly protected marine areas? And will he recycle his Green Ministers to the back benches where they belong and then meet with industry and real experts, actual experts, first minister, to work out first a plan minister, to solve we'll have problem. A to the First Minister. Well, perhaps the applause from the Conservative benches might demonstrate to Fergus Shewing that his, uh, his proposals are not the most sensible uh, that he is suggesting that we bring forward. Uh, I, do not believe, I do not believe that we can simply put our head in the sand and ignored the scale of the climate crisis that we are facing. Yes, house building and house construction is facing challenge. Just look at sky-high rocketing inflation caused by the Conservative government. So yes, let's tackle skyrocketing inflation. Let's tackle some of those high construction costs. And of course, we have uh, several, not just targets, but significant investment in, the, in, in, in house building uh, over the course of this parliament and uh, beyond. And when it comes to ensuring that we replace gas boilers, presiding officer, we will not consign that policy at all to the dustbin of history. In fact, history will judge very poorly those who are climate sceptics or indeed climate deniers in the face of a climate crisis that is harming our planet. Mark Roscoe. While UK government sinks into another culture war, cheered on by climate change deniers and naysayers, here in Scotland, we're realising our ambitions on heat transition. From next April, all new buildings will need to meet our new standards for clean heating. And our package of funding support for households is the most generous in the entire of the UK. So does the First Minister agree with me that our upcoming budget must drive forward pioneering work in tackling fuel poverty and empower households and businesses to make the move to clean heating? First Minister. Yes, I do agree that, uh, of course, when it comes to, when it comes to uh, transitioning from direct emissions heating systems to zero emissions uh, heating systems, that, of course, government has a significant role to play through legislation, through its budget. But let's be equally clear that, of course, this is going to require private investment too. There's barely going to be a government in the world that's going to be able to self-finance that transition to net zero entirely on its own. And that's why the good work being done by the Green uh, Heat Task Force uh, is work uh, that uh, I am looking forward uh, to seeing. Uh, well, we've seen the report and I'm looking forward uh, to acting upon. So uh, Mark Ruskell is absolutely right. We've got to make sure we do take the public uh, with us. That's why we do have such generous uh, grants uh, available, the most generous uh, in uh, the UK in terms of funding support for uh, households. But I go back to the very point that I've made uh, to everybody who's asked on this question, that none of us, none of us, can deny in the face of an existential threat the scale of the climate crisis, none of us can deny that action is needed and, uh, and to accelerate that action as quickly as we possibly can.